of um, mental and emotional tension we're holding physically in our body. They can really help to release um, really tight areas in the body, so they're great for improving your flexibility. And also because they're very restorative classes that are quite slow moving with a lot of breath focus, they really help also to calm down your mind. So perfect really for the evening. So this is a really nice sequence, just a couple of postures that are going to be really good for you to practice in the evening before you go to sleep. So you will need, I have a chair, which is really helpful when you haven't got things like bolsters. Obviously, if you have a bolster, that's great. But if you've got a chair, you can use that. And blankets and pillows, any sort of props you have that are going to make you nice and comfortable. And we're going to start on all fours position. So if you just come onto your mat, wherever you are at home, and just make this box position with your hands underneath your shoulders and your knees underneath your hips. Yeah. And just spend a moment just padding around. If you feel that you need extra cushioning, you can place over the mat. And all we're going to do is to start with is just gently rock the hips. Really start really small from side to side. So while you're here, just feel the weight of the hips moving from side to side. I just want you to just take this moment to tune into your body. So if you're nursing injuries or you have challenges in your body that mean that some of the poses in this class are difficult for you, all the way through I'll give you lots of modifications that you can take. If you reach a point where you think I can't do that posture at all and even the modifications aren't um, suitable for you, then you can maybe lie down and rest. But make sure that you really um, know how your body is before you practice any time. You know, yoga really helps us to tune in with how we feel and to tune in with ourselves, our truest self. So if we know that there's certain things that we shouldn't be doing, then we really probably shouldn't be doing them. Yeah but just gently rocking the hips from side to side, tuning into your body and noticing how it feels. And then as you rock a little bit more, the hips are moving one direction, the head is moving the other, a bit like a heavy bowling ball. You just start to notice this spinal movement, this lateral spinal movement, feeling really nice in your spine. Rocking um, actions are very calming for our nervous system. They work with this sort of belly brain connection you have to really calm us down and then allow the movement to, to slow down so you're not rocking so much, not so obviously, until the movement is so subtle that you're completely still. And then we're going to come into a few rounds of cat and cow, a beautiful way to not only mobilise the spine, but also to make this connection with the breath. So naturally fill your belly and notice when you fill your belly, your Tummy drops to the floor, your tailbone rises to the ceiling, your chest rises slightly. You can lift a chin, but any problems with you have with your neck, just try to keep the head in a fairly neutral position. And starting at your tailbone, when you exhale, tuck it under, draw your belly in, draw your tummy in, and let the chin to move towards the throat. And then inhale again naturally, allow your belly to fill this slouching feeling in your lower back. And as you exhale, arching your back like an angry cat, chin to throat. I just want you to move that way a few more times, breathing in to come into what we call cow, as the belly fills. Exhaling as we come into what we call cat, as the pelvis tucks under the tummy, tightens the chin, moves to the throat. And you start to notice how your body feels. Maybe these movements can start to become bigger and more obvious. Maybe you're finding pockets of tension in your spine where you need maybe not to go so far. Connecting with the breath coming into the nostrils. Connecting to the breath coming out of the nostrils or out of the mouth. I'm just doing it one last time. And then gently ease your buttocks back to heels. We're going to come into what we call child's pose. So here, bottom moves to heels. What you can do if you're quite, if you've got a nice bit of flexibility in your inner thighs and it's comfortable, you can take your knees a little bit wider and sit your bottom back to your heels and let your arms rest. Propping up onto elbows, using a pillow for the head or maybe the hands into a little pillow for the head and try to encourage your bottom to press back to your heels or if you can, let the forehead find the floor. I just want you again, like we did before, when you rock the hips from side to side, just gently rock the body from side to side here. But 
then slowly make your way back up to this all fours position. Yeah. I'm going to get you to step your left foot between your hands, help it. So you're kneeling on one knee and you're coming up to this kneeling position. So if it hurts this back knee, fold the mat over, have the foot flexed, but feel this nice line of energy. So from the top of your head to your tailbone, so sort of tuck under your tailbone so you don't feel like you're leaning too far forwards or too far back. And then just gently rock from the hips. The movement is coming from the hips, not from the spine. So we're just rocking the pelvis. Forwards and back. Yeah. Moving the thigh in the top of the hip so that the thigh is moving in the hip socket. And the back thigh is moving in the hips. So I feel this nice, gentle rocking movement. It starts to feel like we're opening up a little bit of space into this hip here. Yeah. I'm doing that a few times to create this sense of movement. And then as the hands come down, we're just going to simply change legs. So we just step through the other foot, exactly the same on the other side, coming up to kneeling. This as well gives us a little assessment of how tight we feel in our hips we're working these couple of poses we're going to do are very much working on the hips and we can hold a lot of tension in our hips a lot of emotion sometimes it's it's said that we hold anger and maybe a bit of resentment so often when we're moving in poses that allow us to open up in the hips we can feel quite a lot of strong sensations and obviously if we're feeling pain then we back very slightly off it but it may be just slightly uncomfortable but then you might feel a real sense of release. So just again, gently rocking, noticing how each hip feels. Maybe one feels tighter than the other hip. I'm going to come back to all the force position. I'm going to give you two ways to get into this posture, depending on your ability. If you find you can move easily into downward facing dog, we flex the feet. The tailbone pushes back to the heels. The knees come off the ground. We make this inverted V shape, the head hangs down. And we bend one knee at a time. So if you're familiar with downward facing dog, then you can move in this way. If you're not, and you can't do downward dog, just kneel on your mat for a moment, and I'll go through it if you can't get that way. So you lift your um, right foot slightly off the ground, and you draw your right knee in towards your chest, and you flick your shin forwards. And then the left leg is straight. And we try to move the right heel forward. So we're trying to line the shin up with the edge of the mat. Any issues with the knee, draw the heel in towards the bottom, yeah? If you can't get to it from down the dog, you sit on your bottom and you sit over to your right side and you take your right leg in front and your left leg is bent at 90 degree angles. And what you can do is you could place a rolled up blanket or a, something underneath your right buttock so lift the buttock slightly off the floor you can even place something underneath the other thigh so whether we have this back leg bent or if you're a little bit more used to it you can flex your back foot and roll your hip towards your heel and then once you've found the depth in the pelvis relax the foot down again you might need something underneath your right buttock but try to keep your left foot flexed because this helps to bring a bit of integrity into the knee. Now, as you breathe in, lift the chest. And feel the tailbone tucking under and the chest rising. And as you exhale, you're going to come forwards. Now, you can do many, many things. You can rest your elbows maybe on something. Yeah, maybe you've got some books at home you can just rest your elbows on. If you're a little bit more flexible, you might find you can go all the way down to the floor. If that's nowhere near where you're at, I think chairs are brilliant because it really gives you the chance. You can just put the chair around the knee and it comes up to the chest and you can just rest your, your upper body here. So we want to allow the body to relax completely. So we want to let the shoulders relax, the head relax, gently, maybe even gently rock. So the sensation is that you're pulling back on your right buttock and you're pressing the top of your left thigh towards your right heel. And again, you can rock gently here if it feels nice. Maybe just rock a little bit from side to side and just go, oh, I feel that pocket of tension there somewhere and I feel that that is where I need to really release. And when you find, often it's referred to in yoga as the edge 
I like to think of it as, oh, I really feel that I can't go any further position, yeah? So it's like, oh, yes, that's me. That's as far as I'm going today. I'm not going any further than that. Then if you can, just stay with that. And try to relax your body. Try to feel a heaviness coming into your pelvis. A heaviness coming into your legs. And start to connect more with breathing in and out. So really focus on breathing in deeply. And breathing out slowly. So slow your breath down. And really start to connect with the sensation of breathing. Now, how does it feel, really feel, when you focus your 100% attention on your breath? What does your breath feel like as it's travelling into your nostrils? And what does it feel like when it travels back out, whether it's coming out of your nose or whether it's coming out of your mouth? Can you feel a sensation of cool breath coming into your nostrils and a warmer breath moving out of your nose or mouth? Can you notice if your breath feels the same length on the inhale and the exhale? Maybe you need to count in seconds how long that inhalation takes and in seconds how long the exhalation takes. And do that a few times until you feel yeah, maybe my breath in is taking around about four or five counts and my breath out is also taking about four or five counts and it feels comfortable, it doesn't feel forced, it doesn't feel um, like it's causing pain or, or fear. Just focus on those sensations with your breath for just a little longer and if you're feeling too much discomfort, it might be that you just need to back slightly off, lift the chest, bend the back knee. But we're just going to stay here for just a moment or two longer. And then we're going to start our journey out. We take our time coming out because we've been in it for a long time, so don't rush it. So wherever, whether you have the chair or whether you're just on the floor, just start to come up, walk yourself up. Sit over onto your right sitting bone and swing your left leg around in front. And then just extend out both of your legs in front of you, sit up tall. And you might just want to gently rock out your hips and just feel your spine is nice and straight. Just feel your body sort of levelling off. You might notice that the, the right knee that was bent you might feel like you've lost feeling and sensation in it for a while. But what you should get then is a nice flush of fresh, fresh oxygenated blood. So it should feel quite good if you move the legs around. It helps to move everything around our lymphatic system a little bit. Yeah. So we're just going to repeat that same posture on the other side. So if you came into it through downward facing dog, make your way up into downward facing dog now. If you came into it the other way, sit over onto your left sitting bone and swing your legs around, yeah. Then you have your left shin, ideally we're lining it up with the edge of the mat, yeah. If you bring the heel into your groin and make the ankle smaller, you're not going to get such a deep stretch, but it's probably better if you've got knee issues. If you bring your foot forwards, you're going to feel it a lot, lot more. But again, it depends on you, your ability. So if you've come down for your three-legged dog, your left leg is lifted, you've swept the foot through and you're here. Then again, we choose whether we're just folding forwards from this position, placing something underneath the chest, supporting the head, or we're flexing the right leg. And we're trying to rotate the inside of our right thigh to meet the inside of our heel, or the heel of our left foot, sorry. And then feeling the weight in the pelvis, flexing up through this left foot again to protect the knee. And you might notice it feels very different on one side, it certainly does for me. Um, it feels more uncomfortable in my knee on this side. So just modify it however you need to modify it. Again, place something underneath this left buttock. You could place um, something underneath the top of your right thigh if it hurts your knee. And then again, place your props in place. Breathe in, tuck under the tailbone. As you exhale, just let your body come forwards again. Find the support it needs to allow it to stay in this position. And again, you might just want to rock 
gently from side to side. Just notice where maybe you're holding little pockets of tension. Maybe they're in your buttock and when you move your body in one direction, you feel that stronger sensation into your piriformis, into the deep muscles in your buttock. And maybe it feels better for you to be in that position. And then again, we're going to tune back into our breath. Connect with the breath that's the same, that's smooth and even on the inhale. And that's smooth and even on the exhale. So maybe you need to come back to counting your breath in and counting your breath out. Maybe this time you can feel that your breath maybe can be extended a little bit more. So say when you did the last the person on the other side, you breathe in for the count of four and you breathe out for the count of four. Maybe this time you can breathe in for the count of five and exhale for the count of five. Without any feelings of tension, restriction or fear coming up in your body or your mind. The breath wants to be smooth and even. And then we steady the breath and we steady the mind. And just allow your attention to follow your breath into your body and follow your breath out of your body again. And each time you exhale, you feel your body becoming heavier. You tune in with feelings of letting go, of releasing, of relaxing. Wherever you are, make sure you've got some support for your head, even if it's just your hands holding your head comfortably. And again, we're going to stay here for a little longer, so if you need to maybe back off slightly by lifting the chest or bending the back knee. So you don't fully completely come out of it, but maybe if it's too much, you slightly come out. So we really release into the sides of the body, very good for working into our digestive system. Got lots of energy lines running through the body. And we can tap into energies in the body by positioning our body into specific positions, just like an acupuncturist would use needles to work with these energy lines. Again, we stay here just a moment or two longer. And then taking our time to come up. So again, take your time, don't rush out of it. Come up partially onto the hands. Move any supports out of the way that you need to. Sit over onto your left side. And then swing your legs around. And again, just give your legs a little bit of a shake. So again, then you might notice now it's your left and it feels a little bit strange. So we've got two more poses. This pose is going to be lying down on our backs. I'm going to give you options for this. If you have, um, if you have a luxury of having bolster at home, then you could use something like this. If you don't, you can take yourself a blanket and you can roll it up. So it's like a thick sausage. You might want to roll up a few, a couple of blankets, it's quite thick. And you also might need a block or a pillow. So I'm going to place this, bump it up into the tailbone. Now what you can do is you can also sit on something on your bottom, elevate it if you want to. Slide this um, rolled up blanket just along the length of the spine. And when you roll down, bend your knees, or you can lie down on your back, however you can get down to the floor. And you might want to place something under your head. What we want to avoid is the head knocking back here. So we want a very slight tuck of the chin here. So you should start to feel your spine is being supported by this um, rolled up blanket. But the chest can open as the arms come wide. Now if you have something higher, 
you're going to get a stronger sensation of stretch across the front of your body. So for instance, if you did have something like this, you could place it behind you and roll all the way back. And that's going to give you much more a sensation of openness in your hip body. So whether you choose to do it like that, another option you have, probably if, you're, if you know your spine is more flexible, you can take this rolled up blanket the other way. And if you find your bra strap or heart rate monitor line, bottom of your shoulder blades, and you'd place it there. And then you can feel this much, much uh, deeper lift in the ribs. Yes, yeah? so the ribs are really flaring. You again might want to place it when the head's the chin is tucking in, so you've got some length in the back of the neck. So either way, I like this way. Then I want you to place the soles of your feet together. And again, if that's uncomfortable, send the heels away or place some supports underneath the knees. And to make this lumbar curve and this thoracic curve in your back a bit more obvious, the arms can stretch over the front of the head and then you get this lovely sense of stretch through the whole front body. And just let the body settle into wherever it is. As the feet press gently together, try to relax the buttocks and allow the knees to move towards the floor. And just take a moment to relax your body once you feel you've found the edge of the stretch. So once you think, oh yes, I've moved my body into a position where I really feel it, see if you can stay with that now and just relax into it. Just come back to the sensation of breathing in and out, nice and equally and nice and evenly. And just tune into the sensations of relaxing and releasing on the exhale. So whenever you breathe out, just want you to feel the body letting go, becoming heavier, sinking down. And then when you breathe in, tune into feeling energised, feeling like you've got that little spark of energy coming into your body with each inhale, filling you up with everything you need. And when you exhale, you're releasing, you're letting go. Tuning back into an equal and an even breath. Maybe you can extend your breath further. Maybe now you can breathe in for six. And breathe out for six. And we're just going to remain here again for just a moment or two longer. And when the knees come out, the arms move down. Cradle the knees. And have the feet flat so that you can easily just slide out what you need or maybe you need to roll over to your side to do that. You can lift the buttocks if you find your body will let you just pop that out from the side. And then just extend your legs and just lie completely flat for a moment. Just let the head turn over to the right side of your mat. And then bring it back to the centre. And then let it easily roll over to the left side of your mat. So we just release any tension that might have been built up in the neck. One more time, head to centre on the inhale. Head to right on the exhale. The centre on the inhale and to the left on the exhale. And then we're going to move into our final pose. So for this one, I'm going to use chair, but you could use a wall. It's legs up the wall pose, so we'd swing the legs up a wall. But I thought I'd show you with a chair, or you could use the sofa, or maybe if you're doing it in your bedroom before you go to sleep, 
you could use the edge of your bed. So you can either roll to the side or rock yourself up if your body's fine with that. So I'm going to bring the chair closer to me. And just lift up my legs. I might want to place maybe, um, again, my blanket or a pillow or something more comfortable if I'm using a hard chair like this. It's a metal chair, it's not so comfy. Then I swing my legs around. Shuffle your bottom in. Just let your legs rest on the chair or the, or the sofa, wherever you need the bed. Just let your arms come nice and wide. Or you can have your legs against the wall with your bottom close, really, really close to the wall, sort of side line, uh, lie side onto the wall and swing the legs up. And you can have your legs straight there if you want to. What would be nice is just to give you a slightly different variation. So again, the arms can be by the sides, they can be above the head, a bit more calm and restorative if your arms are here by your sides. And just take a moment or two to tune in. Notice if you've placed your body in the right position. This particular posture, you probably won't feel it very much, a real sensation of any description, but you should feel a sensation, I suppose, of, of being supported and that it's quite relaxing. You won't feel a strong stretch sensation this. Very calming way to end your practice. A great pose to practice before you go to sleep. It's very restorative, very calming for our nervous system. Very flushing for the legs if you spend a lot of time sitting or standing up and you get tired and achy, puffy legs. This really helps to sort of give the lymphatic system a little bit of a flush out. So if your body's comfortable, maybe you have a blanket over your body. And I want you to come back to that equal breath, that breath that might be four counts in, four counts out, it may be five or six counts, wherever you're at with your, with your breath practice. Next time you breathe in, when you reach the top of that inhalation, just pause it just for a moment and then exhale very slowly. So breathing in and just having a momentary pause of the breath and then breathing out. It's like you've captured your breath in the balloon. You're just pausing it for a moment or two before you slowly exhale. Next time you breathe out, when you reach the bottom of your exhale breath, do the same, just pause it for a moment and then breathe in. Exhale and pause and inhale. Exhale and pause and inhale. One last time, and we're going to put those two parts of the breath together if it feels comfortable. So breathing in and pausing and breathing out and pausing, inhaling and pausing, exhaling and pausing. And just doing that a few more times. Allow your attention to follow your breath. If your mind wanders off and becomes distracted and agitated, then just guide it back. Attention to turn away from your breath now and just back into your physical body. And just gently start to move your fingers, maybe your head, maybe your toes. You could choose to stay longer in this position if you wish, otherwise, we're going to make our way very slowly up. 
Good. Drawing the knees up in towards the chest. If you're lying with yourself against the wall, you can do the same. You can take a little roll over to the side. So you're lying on your side here. So just for a moment or two, resting. And use one hand, push it into the ground. It's going to help you to sit. And we're going to come and sit. Ankles crossed or, or whatever's good for you. Maybe you're elevating your seat onto something. Makes it more comfortable. Maybe you're going to sit on that chair or against the wall. Just have the palms turned upwards. For a moment, just let the eyes close. And this time, just let your breath be natural. Let it be free. Don't breathe in any particular way, but just observe the natural flow of breath. Maybe observe how you feel mentally, physically. Hopefully you feel a bit quieter, a bit calmer. And just place the palms of your hands together. I'd like to wish you namaste. Thank you for allowing me to guide you through this short practice. Hopefully we'll see you again very soon. Om Namah Shivaya. Thank you.